In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the three most important things that you need to know about a narcissist. And I share this video from experience. The reason I'm creating this video is because my hope, it is my hope and my goal that anyone that I influence with content that I share online or any of my clients that I work with directly gets the support and the healing that they need in order to escape their relationship with the narcissist that they're with or heal it or both preferably. So uh, the reason I share this uh, once again is to support you on your journey and to give you the clarity that I didn't have when I was in a relationship with a narcissist. So there's three really important things for you to know and understanding these uh, mechanisms by which a narcissist operates will help you operate with more clarity in your relationship so that you can understand uh, what they are doing, why they are doing it, and better understand the manner by which they're behaving and begin to detach yourself from the tactics and manipulation that is used by a narcissist. So the first thing you need to know about a narcissist is that they are control starving. I don't mean hungry, I mean absolutely starving. A narcissist seeks control because control is quite literally the currency that they use to uh, push their you know, power, their manipulation, whatever it may be. So a narcissist, a narcissist is always seeking control. They're always seeking to gain control. They're always seeking to um, utilize control to their advantage. So whether it's, you know, uh, something in the home or out of the home, um, you know, the time you go somewhere, where you're going, uh, the list can go on and on and on. A narcissist is going to use control to their advantage. Uh, and the more control they have, the better. They, they may not even have control over something that even matters. Uh, but to them, uh, that control gives them the mental edge or the uh, upper hand in the sense that they know they can utilize this. Um, sort of mentally or psychologically with warfare with you. So they will seek control uh, with things that matter and things that don't matter simply to have that statistical edge and to essentially let you know that they need the control and that you have no part or no say in that. So that's the first thing worth knowing uh, about a narcissist is they're going to seek control. So if you are in a relationship with someone and they seek control more often uh, then what would be harmonious or healthy, like in a balanced relationship, control is kind of shared or choices are kind of shared and there's a harmony there. Uh, if that's not there, that's a red flag that uh, the person that you're with in a relationship could be a narcissist. Number two, the number two thing that's worth noting is that a narcissist will utilize manipulation and deception to their advantage. They are not afraid to lie. So this feeds into the first trait of a narcissist, which is to be in con as much control as possible as often as possible. So they will utilize deception, manipulation, just flat out lying to you to maintain their sense of control, not their actual control, their sense of control. And what's important to know here is that the manipulation or deception uh, or lie that is utilized by a narcissist can be incredibly deep and incredibly, um, let's just say, life-changing if you are not familiar with how far someone can go to manipulate or deceive you. So they could quite literally lie about where they're from, they could lie about their family, their career, uh, the list goes on and on and on. So, you know, you can paint a picture, uh, an imaginative picture of how, how far someone could go uh, with little lies paired together or one big lie and then having little lies sort of try to back that up. Obviously, as you and I know, when someone lies in this sort of way or manipulates or deceives, it, it more than likely will come back to haunt them because the truth uh, cannot stay underwater long. So, but they realize and they recognize that they can utilize manipulation and deception as a tool or mechanism to further cement their control within the relationship. So that's where it gets even more dangerous and it becomes a more slippery slope because if they don't feel like they have enough control or they want more control and they're very narcissistic, they will create a lie or a 
bigger lie in order to maintain that sense of power or control in the relationship. Even though they really don't have as much power and control as they think, it's a sense of that uh, because in actuality and reality, you're not in control, I'm not in control, no one's in control, uh, but we are in charge and that's a different distinction. Uh, so that's the second thing worth knowing is that they will manipulate, deceive, lie to maintain their sense of control. And the third thing you need to know, which is really the most important uh, and it is really the backbone of everything is that a narcissist does not care. They do not care about your mental, emotional, and sometimes physical well-being. Let me say that one more time. A narcissist does not care about your mental, emotional, or physical well-being. In other words, your mind, body, and spirit is literally irrelevant to them. They, could, they might as well see you as a piece of trash going out. They might as well see you uh, as uh, a tool that can be used in the tool shed. A narcissist looks for the opportunity to utilize people, to use them, to use their brain power, to use their heart power, their emotions, right? So their mind and their emotions, how they think and how they feel, how they believe and how they feel, against them for the manipulative purpose of feeding into their own power or control, right? So a narcissist, the reason they don't care is because a narcissist is very detached and disconnected from what true love actually is. True love is so far gone from a narcissist's psyche that they don't understand the depth and value of it. So if you don't understand the depth and value of something, you're not going to put time, energy, uh, resources, whatever it may be into acquiring that thing because the value exchange isn't there. It's like going to purchase something at the store that's very pricey, but you don't recognize the value of how pricey it is. So you're thinking with a dollar store mentality. This is what narcissists do. They approach relationships with a dollar store mentality. Cheap, fast, easy, what can I get, I'm gone. They don't see the quality, they don't see the value. They, they don't see the depth of a human being or individual because they don't get past the surface. They don't get past um, the, the roadblock of their own vision, essentially. So let's recap this video real quick. Number one, a narcissist is seeking control more than anything. They desire control because the main reason they desire control is really simply because they are so detached and disconnected from love that they seek control and attention as a cheap product that's secondary to love. So they have moved love aside and they said, all right, that's not an option anymore. Uh, that's not gonna work in my life. There's no way. They literally don't believe in love, let alone unconditional love or you know, agape love, rich, true love. They don't believe in that because they haven't experienced it in their lives personally. And it, that's understandable. Uh, it's like trying to explain something to someone that doesn't even understand the construct by which you're explaining what you're explaining. It simply doesn't make sense. So uh, they seek control and they do that to, it's really a defense mechanism. So they're looking to maintain that control and that status in the relationship in an effort to not get hurt, in an effort to not get scarred, in an effort to not be broken, right? So if they can maintain that power or control status within the relationship, what they're essentially doing in their mind is preventing themselves from getting hurt, betrayed, um, you know, cheated on, whatever, whatever happened in the past, abused physically, sexually, whatever happened in the past that they experienced, right, typically by a narcissistic person in their lives, they're utilizing that control as a layer of protection to control the outcome, right? So they're doing it preemptively to set themselves up to be in a position where they believe they have control, they believe they have power, when in actuality, all they're doing is hurting the person they're with and hurting themselves further um, in that relationship and also in the next relationship that they're in because they're not healing. Instead of, instead of healing, they're focusing on the same uh, control tactics and manipulation and deception uh, and shallow behavior that they had before. So control is the first thing. Uh, and I know I'm recapping this again, but there's kind of layers to this, so I wanna go a bit deeper. Uh, the second thing 
is the uh, the manipulation, the deception, the lies. So manipulation, deception, and lies are utilized to create a further sense of control, but really a um, layers there that build upon what they have, but that are fabricated. So essentially a house of cards sense of control. So they may even have some control, right? Because you give it to them and they're, they're such a hassle to deal with. They start throwing a tantrum, which is a childhood trauma response, by the way, or whatever it may be. They, they have this like control mechanism that they've inflicted in the relationship, but then the manipulation, deception, and lies deeper are utilized for them to create a larger sense of control, larger than life, essentially, that isn't actually there. That's like a balloon, like a little needle will pop it, right? Like any lie will pop, uh, any balloon lie will pop with a little needle. And what occurs is that they're building on this, uh, this sense of control that they think that they have. And in doing so, they dig a hole for themselves deeper simply because they are distancing trust, integrity, uh, connection, harmony, communication, all of these things that are required in a healthy relationship, they're literally pushing away further by investing deeper into manipulation, deception, and lies. And last but not least, uh, the mind, body, spirit of the individual, me when I was in a relationship with a narcissist, you if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, is not valued by the narcissist. This is really important to understand because you may think to yourself, they care, they've shown they've cared, you know, they love me, they say they love me, you know, they buy me gifts, they do this, they do that, you know, they, they act this way, but then like 10, 15 minutes later, they're like all like hugging me and saying, I'm sorry. These are all deceptive, manipulative tactics that are utilized to continuously rope you in, to throw the bait and then reel you in so that you don't see the depth of the scam that they're playing. You are a player in their game. You are literally a puzzle piece. You are literally a piece on the monopoly board that they're moving at their will to benefit off of and get royalties, whether it's mind royalties, heart royalties, physical royalties, whatever it may be. And they will use anything to their extent especially the very toxic narcissists, and there's different classifications of narcissists. That's not the point of this video. This video is already too long. But they will do anything to their extent to continuously manipulate your mind, your emotions, and your body, right? So they will literally use their mind. They will literally use their emotions, and they will literally use their body against you to keep you reeled in and stuck to the scam. So it's important to understand that if you recognize in your relationship right now, the partner that you're with has a very strong sense of control that seems unhealthy and there you've discovered manipulative, deceptive tactics, lying, etc. There's a very high likelihood, there's a very high chance that you are in a relationship with a narcissist. These are typical red flags that show up in a relationship with a narcissist. So if you desire to be free from that, it takes work, you know, and this is what I do with my clients. It takes work and you don't heal overnight. You cannot take a pill or a drug or a psychedelic or go on a journey, uh, you know, in the Amazon and do ayahuasca and heal. You literally need to do the work. You cannot bypass or skip the work. So if you're in a relationship with a narcissist or you've heard this video as a narcissist and you go, you know what? This lifestyle is no longer working for me and I need to rationally approach this. I need to be stoic, put my emotions to the side or suppress them a bit. I know that sounds weird, especially with other things that I say, but you sometimes need to override your emotions and think logically to move in the appropriate directions to then bring your emotions back into play in order to have everything, your mind and emotions work in your favor. And I shouldn't say suppress emotions because that's not what I mean, but rather override your emotions uh, for what needs to occur. So once again, if you are in a narcissistic relationship or you are a narcissist yourself and you desire to truly heal and you desire to be humble enough to do the work and be vulnerable and share where you're at, where you would like to go and really truly desire a healing path to rewire your brain, rewire your mind. Because one of the things that happens in a narcissistic relationship is 
your brain gets completely hijacked. You think your, your thoughts and your beliefs and your emotions get completely turned upside down because your re reality becomes so convoluted that your sense of reality is essentially like a distortion field. So if you have recognized that you no longer recognize yourself and that that distortion field is active in your life, you really need to understand that your mind, how you think and your beliefs and your emotions are being turned against you and manipulated against you. And if you desire to heal from that, if you desire to be free from that self-imprisonment, right? Because at some point you have to recognize it's self-imprisonment. It's no longer the imprisonment from them unless you're still in the relationship with them, in which case that's a topic in and of itself. But there's a degree of self-imprisonment within any relationship, right? Where we have to take accountability and responsibility, even if we are getting abused. Because when we do so, it allows us the freedom to see a pathway out and to see how to move into the next version of our lives, the next season of our lives, to not be stuck in the past, but rather move forward into the future in a healed, healthy, optimal state where your mind, your emotions, and your heart are pure and aligned with who you truly are and not convoluted by who you were because that is in your power, that is in your hands. And like I said earlier in this video, you're not in control, but you are in charge. And if you desire to take charge of your life, this is something that I do with my clients personally. I support them in their energy, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. All of these energy forces in our life are at play and they work in our favor or against our favor every single day. And if we don't take the time and do the due diligence to understand where our energy is moving in our life and we don't orient our energy properly, no change will occur. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Nothing heals if no action is put forward in an effort to remedy a situation, in this case, a relationship. So this is what I do with my clients. And I personally, this is something that I've been through personally. So it's not something that I speak from in a hypothetical way, in any way whatsoever. Like it's very, very real in my life. And it's been something that has been an incredibly difficult challenge in my life. And it's the reason I do what I do today because I desire to support people in getting out of these situations and getting them on the healing path. I don't claim to be a healer. I'm not a healer. I don't believe any human is a quote unquote healer. I believe we're facilitators. I believe we are, uh, we're, we help people and support people in creating clarity so that they can find the best healing path for them. But there's specific tools that put you on that path, path, path. <laughs> there's specific, there's, there's a compass and there's different tools, right? There's different um, practices that are utilized to orient yourself in the direction of healing. And then when energy is applied in that direction, traction occurs. And once traction is going in the direction of healing, that builds momentum over time. And then from there, everything else falls behind. But that those initial action steps have to be taken. So if this video makes any sense and it, and it resonates with you in any way, and you desire to be in a healthy relationship with yourself, if you desire to be in a relationship with yourself that is healthy, not with someone else, if you desire to be in a relationship with yourself that is healthy so that you can be in a relationship with someone else that is healthy, I'm the person that wants to work with you. I'm the person that wants to work with you in the trenches, in the hard times, and supports you in doing that difficult work and trudging through that mud so you can get to the ocean, so you can get to the beach, so you can wash that mud off and enjoy some sunshine again. My name is David Benjamin. If you want to learn more about my coaching services, you can visit healthywildfree.com forward slash coaching. I'll put the link right below this video and uh, just apply for coaching there and we'll have a discovery call. The discovery call is completely free and uh, just to see if we're a fit for each other. If we're not, I'll direct you to someone that I feel like can help you better and support you on your journey better. Um, and that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, leave a comment below. More than happy to answer questions and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.